So this one's a little bit more unusual than what we normally do. So we normally do carbon bikes, and um, and this one is clearly an aluminium bike. It's actually a tandem, and uh, it uh, it failed at the uh, at the dropout, and with the current uh, COVID restrictions in uh, in Melbourne and the availability of replacements. So normally you, you I mean this sort of bike would be what I mean. The way it failed is clearly a warranty. Uh, however, there are no bikes available at the moment um, due to all the shipping restrictions and the, everything going on in the world right now. It's quite crazy. The the owner um, really needed needed this bike um, from a, a, a commuting point of view for essential essential travel and also for mental health reasons. So um, normally, normally like you, you, you try and get a replacement uh, if there's one available. In this case, it's not available. The bike needs to be, uh, needs to be used. And so what other options are there to get this bike going again? So the bike came in and it had two two crack indications so the primary one sort of in this area here where the um so th there's a a, a one piece uh, dropout sort of uh, part which is then welded to the chainstay so that failed right at the uh, at the edge of the weld and also another crack through here so in terms of trying to re-weld something like that um there's complications with heat treatment and all that sort of stuff. So what um, what I suggested to the owner was that we do a a, a carbon repair on that uh, on that area of the bike. So surprisingly, and, and you may not know this, but it's it's quite common in uh, defence circles to do composite repairs on metallic structures. So there's been a lot of work done in this area. You know, on battlefield repairs for for airframes, your metal airframes, and uh, even the, the defence group I worked with a long time ago in the 90s, we repaired a navy frigate which had an aluminium superstructure which developed cracks, and for, for um, you know the, in the in the area where where the crack was, it was very difficult and costly to weld because all the electronics was in the, in the adjacent area just below where the crack was and and that would of course problems with the, the high frequency welding equipment etc so we did a um, the uh, composite repair on that area um, which as far as I'm aware it's still it's still operational and um, it's been um, I mean when was that that was 25 years ago um, you know it's been inspected regularly and still in service as far as I'm aware so it's um, it's not a common thing in um, in civilian applications but uh, definitely a common thing in the military so it was um, it was it was one of the things that said well let's uh, let's look at that as an option and um, you know as, as, as an aside many many years ago again in the in the mid 90s there was um, a, a friend of mine used to be a professional bike rider uh, here in Australia, and he was sponsored by Cannondale at the time. And the CAD frames all cracked at the rear dropout um, on the drive side, where they crimped the um, they crimped the stay, the chain stay, uh, to provide clearance for the uh, for the cog uh, on the on the cassette, and. And the frames were all cracking there. Lots and lots of them cracked. I mean, they kept on denying that it was a problem, but then they changed the design in the next the next iteration of it. But anyway, he he needed this bike for um, the Herald Sun Tour, which is a, a, a one week stage race here in in Victoria, and it, it cracked a couple of days before. So I repaired this bike for him, and he rode through the um, rode the stage the, the stage race on that bike um, without any issues at all. And um, yeah, we, you know, we I think we repaired about five or six of those bikes um, around that time because they were all all failing. So 
although not a common uh, not a common procedure um, it is uh, it is effective in the right circumstances so as you can see the crack propagates um, right so it's adjacent to the weld here and also also here right adjacent to that rib so the um, it, it's not looking at that design it's it's obvious that the, um, the the design of the part isn't up to the job like from a fatigue point of view because it failed right adjacent to the, the the stiffest area so where the rib is in this area and and where it's welded to the chain stay tube in this area so the gradient of stiffness through that area is obviously less than ideal and so hence you've got the failure occurring right on that spot here we have a closer look at the crack you know it's it's, uh, it's all the way through it's right next to the uh, to the weld junction there uh, clearly a fatigue crack and then the second crack was um, mainly through the outer face and the lower face so it wasn't all the way through in this uh, location so the first step is to clean the area very thoroughly to, to remove we want it all back to bare metal so because we're bonding composite to the aluminium structure we need that bond to be as as good as possible so you know we need a, a really reliable bond so the first step is is to clean it so we, you know, we do a um, you know we mechanically remove all the paint and then um, and then we chemically etch the surface so here's a look on the inside it's all chemically etched it's all ready for bonding so you know the next the next stage is is to um, align the uh, the position of it and um, and ensure that um, yeah, everything's in the right place effectively so it's been etched and um, and it's had a, a bonding uh, adhesive primer applied to it so it's all ready for bonding now the important thing is if we're doing a carbon repair you know, there's a number of factors which are really critical to this so if you want it, if you want it to last so the you you get a galvanic corrosion between aluminium and carbon unless they're isolated so the first layer that needs to be put down is um, is actually some glass fiber and um, and what that does is that acts as an insulating barrier which um, then isolates the two dissimilar materials so you don't get that galvanic corrosion now the other factor is at the at the transitions so as, as you're going up up the tubes like in this area here you don't want a hard edge of carbon so you you want to taper off the edges of of the carbon so you have basically steps sort of running from here and then it might it'll get a bit thicker and I mean that's exaggerated obviously but you basically lay down plies to build up the thickness so you don't have a um, you know what what you definitely don't want is something like this where you've got the full thickness and and a hard edge in that spot there because then that will peel and and then disbond uh, due to those peel stresses so the the other thing that um, why a carbon repair works well on on aluminium is because the carbon has a higher modulus of elasticity it will it will take the load um, it, so it, the, the the load path will be directed into the carbon as opposed to into the aluminium so like I mean that's it's a very simplified way of talking about it but um, as I said previously defense have done a lot of work on this and and by using a higher modulus material um, and in the same way if you were going to weld it you'd you put a doubler down to to increase the thickness and so you're increasing the stiffness to support the uh, and direct the load path through that um, that higher stiffer material 
So once it was all jigged up and uh, and then the, the carbon laid up, well, first the glass, then the carbon material, then the part was vacuum bagged and uh, and that red glow is um, is the glow from a heat lamp. So you know, we use a um, we use a heat lamp to elevate the temperature cure because this being a tandem, it doesn't fit into our regular uh, frame oven. So otherwise we'd put it into the oven. In this case, it's too big, so we use a heat lamp. So the um, it it yeah, it's all vacuum bagged. All the plies are placed, and uh, and then now it's being cured at temperature. So the um, the resin used was a um, an aerospace re repair resin, which is specifically designed for this sort of application, and um, it, you know, it's one that we used on on F18 repairs when I was working at Boeing as well. So it's a very very high quality resin. Um, it does uh, it does prefer elevated temperature cure like a, a, a room temp cure on it is seven days um, elevated temperature cure is one hour so and because time was uh, a, a bit of an essence on this we wanted to turn it around as quick as possible you know you definitely go elevated temperature cure the elevated temperature also gives you um, really really good mechanical properties as well so you get more complete cross-linking uh, in a in a quicker way so it's always trying to do an elevated temperature cure if you can so here we have the finished repair and uh, as you can see it tapers off nicely to the to the chain stay and and up up through this area and also along the dropout tab in here and also up we've gone up the tab a little bit as well so it has been uh, sealed with a, a two-pack, uh, two-pack clear urethane to absorb UV and protect it uh, from environmental exposure, and um, but yeah, so that's that's basically good to go. Um, you know, if we look at the other side, now you can see that we've actually filled in the, that cavity that was there. So we used a a syntactic foam to fill that area, which then um, so then the carbon placed around it is is, is a tubular section as opposed to being a c-section so it provides a much better uh, much better load path and um, yeah, it's going to be better in every way really so um, yeah so that's that's what it looks like that's a carbon repair on an aluminium frame Thanks, Raul.